What is going on everybody? So you decided to join the army and you're curious what the actual timeline is from whenever you first call your recruiter to when you actually ship out to basic training. So I haven't done that actual little specific intro of so you decided to join the army in absolutely forever. But this video is geared towards those of you out there who are just beginning to actually think about joining the military. Doesn't necessarily have to be army specific, but you haven't gone to your recruiter yet, you haven't called a recruiter yet, and you're kind of curious like, okay, whenever I actually do speak with a recruiter, what is the timeline? Like what can I expect or how long can I expect this to actually take from whenever I first speak with a recruiter to whenever I actually leave. And whenever you look this up online, you don't really see like timelines. You don't really see like, this is gonna take this long, this is gonna take this long, and this is gonna take however else long because there's not really any set time, but I am gonna do my best to actually tell you what you can expect and how long some things are going to take. And along the process, like, what are some areas that people kind of get tripped up on and certain aspects of the enlistment process that could take longer than others, in some cases, like a really long time. Two things that I wanna get out of the way real quick. If you are looking to do OCS or you're not a current uh, United States citizen, so those are two situations where this is gonna be kind of like in a different enlistment process and it's going to take longer to do those things, okay? OCS is different, you gotta just, you know, build a different package. You're not gonna be applying for the same MOSs and you also have to go to boards and things like that. So again, that's gonna be different. But for your normal person, the, the enlistment process that I had whenever I first enlisted, this is what you can expect. Now, whenever you first actually like maybe Google, you know, the enlistment process, you might come across something that's similar to what the recruiters that I did a video with, with recruiters like a year or two ago, they posted something on Instagram, it's the roadmap to enlisting. And yes, it is very true. Uh, I'll probably throw up a picture of it on the screen. And you got your steps one through step eight. You got step one, talk to a recruiter. Step two, take the ASVAB exam. Step three, submit an application packet. Step four, choose your job, which is choosing your MOS. Actually, step four is a little bit misleading because I just made a video on that and how your MOS is not your job, so make sure you check that one out. But step four, you're choosing your MOS, not necessarily your job. Step five, receive a physical exam from a medical professional. Step six, review contract and select training dates. Step seven, swear into service. And step eight, ship to basic training. Now, that kind of makes it seem like it's just you're gonna do this, then that, then this, then that, and there's a, a set, a set kind of timeline for that, and that's not the case. In this video, I'm going to talk about these different steps, and I'm actually gonna add some very, very important key uh, points that you're gonna hit along the enlistment process, and how this is a little bit misleading because a lot of this is combined into a single day or a single task. So for the purposes of this video, I'm gonna go over my 11 different kind of steps and points that you're gonna hit and some sub points within that on how you might get tripped up or mistakes you could make or some different aspects that could take a long time. So I'm gonna let you know that and also let you know if everything goes smoothly, how long it could take. So obviously your first thing you gotta do is you gotta call up a recruiter where you can walk in Preferably, you're just gonna call one up and actually schedule an appointment. So step number one, talk to a recruiter, schedule an appointment. And whenever you actually have that first scheduled visit with the recruiter, there's gonna be a lot of things that potentially are gonna be taking place. I'm gonna assume for the purposes of this video, when you're talking with the recruiter and you're sitting down with them, you're actually wanting to start the process. You're not just kind of like curious or whatever. But whenever you have that first meeting, the recruiter is gonna pre-screen you. This shouldn't take any time at all. They're just gonna ask you some simple questions. But for that first meeting, this is an opportunity for you to actually ask the recruiter a bunch of generic army questions. You're not gonna really uh, get a lot of specific MOS specific uh, questions answered about something that you may want because the recruiter is gonna say, hey, we need to get you to take the ASVAB before we can really talk in depth about this because they don't know if you've actually qualified yet for this or not. But what they're gonna have you do is you're gonna take a practice ASVAB at the recruiter's office, potentially if you want to anyways, if you have the time to do it. And that will give you kind of like a rough estimate of what you're actually going to make on the ASVAB. 
And I also wanna note that you will end up going through a background check at some point. They don't really wanna waste your, waste their time with you know doing all this paperwork, doing all this stuff, getting ready for somebody who just ends up failing a background check. So you're gonna take a background check very early on in the, in the process. So you could talk to a recruiter once or twice or three times, doesn't really matter, but the initial meetings with the recruiters is gonna be just that. You're gonna be asking them questions, background, background check, practice, ASVAB, all that stuff. And then step number two is you have to take the actual ASVAB. And so for this, your recruiter is gonna take you to MEP. So your recruiter's gonna drive you there, they're gonna drop you off, uh, they'll probably come back in a couple hours or so whenever you actually finish the, finish the ASVAB. And then when you're done with the ASVAB, now you have the biggest thing out of the way. You actually know what you can qualify for with the different MOSs in the Army, and then you're gonna go to step number three, which is you're gonna begin and or submit the packet applications. So everything up until now, you could get done in just a matter of days. In my case, I think I did the first meeting with a recruiter, and I think uh, the next Tuesday, was my first time going to MEPS and actually taking the ASVAB. I think I met with a recruiter on like a Thursday or a Friday, and then on like Tuesday I went to MEPS, took the ASVAB, and then um, I was talking about my MOSs and stuff that I had available to me like that day. Now depending on what you actually want out of the military, what you want in your enlistment contract, this part is gonna be where you're gonna be really asking those in-depth questions. This is gonna be whenever, if you wanna go to airborne school, if you wanna have your option for a contract, you're gonna be discussing that with your recruiter. You're gonna see what actual options are available to you. You're gonna see what MOSs are available to you at this point. And this could be very quick or it could take a really long time and that's gonna be dependent on you. And so this is kind of why you may not see actual timelines out there because for me, for example, uh, whenever I first started looking at my MOSs, the MOS that I wanted was not available. Lucky for me, it came available literally the next day. And so that was kind of luck on my part. It could be a day like mine, or it could be weeks. It could be several months. And so this part of the enlistment process, step number three, you know, beginning, submitting, building your packet, filling the tons and tons of paperwork out. This is gonna be dependent on you and how kind of picky you wanna be with your MOS, how kind of picky you wanna be with maybe waiting for an airborne slot, things like that. So if you find the MOS you want, you don't care about airborne school, you don't care about option 40 contract, you get the GI Bill and all the different numbers and enlistment bonuses that you want, you can go ahead and listen. You can do that in a day or so. For me, for example, again, this took me uh, the first day, couldn't find the MOS. Second day, found it, started the process and filling out all the paperwork at that point. One more thing that I wanna mention is when you're building your application and you're doing all the paperwork, there's a lot of paperwork you're gonna have to do. You're gonna have to get you know your transcripts and learn a lot of stuff, your birth certificates. You're gonna get a lot of paperwork done. But if you happen to need a waiver for something, this is another part where you can kind of get the enlistment process hung up on something because getting a waiver could take days, it could take weeks, or it could take months. So if you find yourself in the category where it ends up taking months, just make sure you're kind of in constant, constant, constant communication with your recruiter, you know, just seeing what in the world you can do, uh, how much you can bug them essentially uh, to kind of get this, you know, started. But again, depending on the waiver, your recruiter may be able to help, he may not be able to help, it's just gonna depend. So this part, again, is going to be dependent on you with how long you wanna spend, you know, being picky, waiting on your MOS, and then also, uh, how long the waiver is gonna take if you have to have a waiver. If you don't have to have a waiver, well, you're good. So step number four is whenever you actually end up picking your MOS and your recruiter is gonna do this with you and they will lock in your actual MOS. So whenever you go to MEPS eventually, that should be reserved for you. Now I say locked in because in some cases it gets taken, but 99% of the time whenever you go to MEPS, your MOS, the contract, whatever you wanted, is going to be there and it's gonna be available. It's not gonna be taken away from you. Don't worry about all the reasonings for that, but I'm just letting you know. So everything up until step number five, which is going to MEPS, that's a lot of the variables, really. That's all the variables that you're gonna have. You may, at this point, it kinda depends, I'm just gonna let y'all know, you may know your ship date at this point, considering everything goes fine in MEPS, and you may not know your ship date. You may find that out whenever you get to MEPS, and you may get to pick those training dates that, were, that I talked about in the previous recruiter's 
uh, posts that they did. So again, you may know your ship dates and you may not know your ship dates when you go to MEPS, but up until MEPS, it could take a week like it was for me. It took me literally like a week from the time that I first sat down with the recruiter. I went to MEPS, took the ASVAB, got my application, everything ready. And then a couple days after that, I was at MEPS again, going through the medical examination that I'm talking about here and then swearing in. So it could take two weeks or it could take, you know, six months. So a few key points that I want to hit about the whole MEPS thing. Again, your recruiter is going to drive you to actually a hotel where you're going to stay at a hotel the night before you go to MEPS. And in the morning of your MEPS date, uh, you're going to get up really early because it's going to be a very, very long day. You're going to go to MEPS and at MEPS, you're going to have your physical examination. You're going to review your contract and select your training dates. You're going to also if you need a security clearance and have that security clearance interview, that is when you're gonna have that initial interview. Um, so just keep that in mind for me personally. They kind of just, after all the medical examination stuff, they kind of just like pulled me aside into a different room. They you know, took people um, and had some guy just ask us very basic background, drug questions, alcohol questions, things like that. So just be warned about that. If you need a security clearance, that's another step that you have to go through. So before you actually end up getting swearing, I just wanna kinda of make this clear that you will get a chance to go over and review your contract at MEPS with the MEPS officer or whatever. I'm not exactly sure what they are called, but you're gonna be going over your contract and if you have not selected your training date yet at this point, then you will do that then. And then once that is done, once you have signed away your life, like a lot of people like to say, which you really haven't signed away your life in the sense you're just kind of, you know, four years of service to the best country in the world. And once you get done with that, then you're gonna be, you know, doing your oath of enlistment. So that's gonna be another key thing that happens there. And then once you're done with your oath of enlistment, the enlistment process is done, except for some other steps that you might not know about. After you swear in, it's not just everything's over until you leave for basic training. There are gonna be some additional things that you have to do. For example, depending on how far out your actual ship date is, you may have to attend one or several future soldier trainings. You may have to go some additional PT days with your recruiter. They may do that once a week or something. Uh, so you're gonna have some in-person and online future soldier training to complete. It's not that big of a deal. It's not gonna be that hard. The online stuff is pretty simple, but it's also really important. They should include in that. Watch some of Matt Ward's older videos on some tips for joining the military. So if you are curious of joining, definitely, definitely, definitely look through that. But again, for real though, it's gonna be very, very simple stuff. And then once that future soldier training stuff is over, this whole time your recruiter is gonna be kind of like building your itinerary and getting everything ready to go for your flight or bus or if they're just if you're close enough to the basic training post that you're gonna to go to them just driving you to basic training and then the day of your ship date you know your recruiter will have gone over with you all the documents and stuff that you need to bring they'll have given you your packet they'll have given you your itinerary they'll have given you everything that you need and then all you have to do is just leave. You just have to go where you're supposed to be gone. Um, and that's really it. That is it for your enlistment process into the military. So this video, as usual, in my video sometimes, went a little bit longer than I had expected because there's actually a lot of stuff to cover whenever you're talking about the enlistment process. It's not super duper easy to say, hey, this is the time that this is going to take and this is gonna take this long and this is gonna take this long. It could literally take uh, two weeks, like mine took two weeks to go through the initial enlistment process. I actually shipped to basic training three months later. So that's just a little timeline for me. It took me uh, three and a half months from the time that I first called my recruiter to whenever I shipped to basic training. But for you, it could be a month. You could talk to a recruiter and ship to basic training in a less than a month, really. You could also talk to a recruiter or have to wait on your MOS, have to wait on a waiver, have to wait on security clearance, all these kinds of things. And it could be like a year before you actually end up going to basic training. You could have to be in the delayed entry program 
which is for people who basically just, it's gonna be several months before you actually end up getting to ship to basic training. One last thing that I wanna mention is if you are actually interested in joining the military, you're still watching this video right now and you're just like, okay, now I'm a little bit nervous about actually talking to a recruiter, calling a recruiter. I'm not trying to recruit you guys. I'm just trying to help you get over these fears that I had whenever I first enlisted. And I just wanna let you know that go ahead, make that first appointment, make that first phone call with your recruiter because you don't have to sign anything. You don't have to do anything until you actually sign that contract. Now you could have those first three steps that I talked about where you have your first meeting with your recruiter, where you take the ASVAB and you build your application. Those steps could take as long as you want, as long as you feel comfortable. So go ahead, talk to your recruiter, ask some questions, and then I recommend to you to take the ASVAB. Just go ahead and take the ASVAB, don't worry about it. Taking the ASVAB is not a sign that you have to join the military. It is not like that. It's just gonna be really beneficial for you to actually know what your ASVAB score is, for you to actually know what jobs you qualify for because right now you're kind of just sitting at home if you haven't called a recruiter yet anyways and you're just like oh i want to do this in west i want to do this in west i want to do this in west but you don't actually know if you can do that or not but once you take the as that which you can do again like i said within a week of talking to a recruiter that first phone call with the recruiter that first meeting with the recruiter you could do all that within a week and you can know that. And so that would be another thing, lift off your shoulders and you can actually have those conversations about the jobs or MOSs that you want. So that is gonna be it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, hit that like button. That'd be awesome. If you wanna stick around some more of my videos, I have a ton of other older videos in the past that is gonna be for those of you. If you're still watching this video, make sure you check those out. Follow me on Instagram and Snapchat. If you haven't already, hope you guys have an amazing freaking day. I'll see y'all later.